Do you wonder how do I title my pins? How do I write a Pinterest pin title? Or maybe you're curious how you can start writing those click worthy pin titles that are going to increase your outbound clicks on Pinterest. So hey there bosses, it's Natalie Bardo, your Pinterest coach here, and I'm going to break down with you exactly how you can start writing those juicy and click worthy Pinterest pin titles, including six secrets you're going to want to make sure you keep in mind the next time you upload a Pinterest pin. But first, be sure to give this video a quick thumbs up, letting me know you found it helpful and that you like these types of videos. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I've got weekly free Pinterest training coming your way. So let's talk Pinterest pin titles. First, you might be wondering, okay, what exactly is a pin title? Let's go over it together with an example. So right here, this is one of my pins. And you know it's a pin title because it appears in the larger font on Pinterest. It's usually right below your domain. So three ways to let go of anger and bitterness in life. This is the pin title. In case you're wondering, down below, that's the pin description. Okay, so there's the pin title, which you enter when you're uploading a new pin on Pinterest. There's also the pin title that can appear on your pin. So right here, your pin is an image and you can see here, I've got the same pin title on my image. And there's a reason for that. This is the primary pin that I created for this blog post. So yes, your pin title can be the same as your content title, whether that's a YouTube video, a blog post, or even a product. And you can see on my blog, I've got the exact same one. Something that you should also keep in mind is that you can differentiate your blog post title from your Pinterest title or even your social media title. So I'm using a plugin called Grow Pro by Mediavine. It's a social sharing plugin. And you can see here that I've got my social media title and it also allows me to preload my Pinterest title. So let's now talk about the basics of a pin title. A pin title can be up to 100 characters in length, but here's the important thing to keep in mind. Typically, only the first 30 characters are going to appear in search results on Pinterest. That means you want to front load your pin titles with your keyword phrase, because remember, Pinterest is a search engine. So if someone is going to discover your content, it's going to be with your keyword. So back on Pinterest in the search results, you can see we've got all these images that are pins and down below, these are the pin titles. So you can see, usually it's not showing you the entirety of the title. It's just those first 30 characters. So you want to be sure to front load it with your keyword. So you might be wondering, why is it so important to create click worthy pin titles? It's important because it's your pin title that oftentimes determines whether somebody clicks or chooses not to. Your image draws them in. And this is particularly important if your pin is just a photo or a video. If you don't have any titles written directly on your pin, it's so important to make sure that your pin title does the rest of the work for you. That in many cases can be the deciding factor between clicking on one pin or another. So take the time to make it look official. Use title case, meaning that you're using uppercases in the first letter of every word and your pin titles. And it's also important that when you choose your pin titles, you deliver with the content. Do not be click baity. Make sure that when they click, you're giving them what you promised in your pin image as well as in your pin title. All right, so I just wanna to talk to you quickly about some things you do not wanna do when writing pin titles. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to make sure you do not do with your pin title is include the word click. Also, don't include the word buy. These are spammy words that Pinterest has themselves said do not use them in pin titles. So don't include the word click, okay? 
But here's the loophole. You can use the word click on your pin image or something similar just like this pin, okay? But don't write it in your pin title. Another thing that you want to make sure you do not do is repeating your pin description in your pin title or your pin title in your pin description. Your pin title and your pin description need to be different. Don't just copy and paste. If you need help with writing pin descriptions, be sure to check out this video where I share with you a formula that you can steal and use for your own pin descriptions. You also wanna make sure that your pin title is different from the title on your pin image. Don't just copy and paste, don't just say the same thing, change it up a bit. So in this example, she means blogging on her pin image title, best web host to start a blog, cheap and affordable, but her pin title is five web hosting for small business. You can see how it's on the same topic, but her title is different and also her description. And in this example, we have dare to love yourself again, start here as the pin image title, but her pin title is 40 plus ways to love yourself a little more. You can see how instead of just copying and pasting from one to the other, you can diversify the titles that you're using from your pin descriptions. So do not just copy and paste. A key factor is knowing what your keywords are or what your keyword is for that specific pin. So what are you writing your content on? Which keyword best describes what this piece of content is about? You've got to know what your keywords are. And I'm gonna show you how you can easily find the best long tail keyword phrase to include in your pin titles. So in case you don't know, a long tail keyword phrase is typically three to five words long and it's specific enough. It's not so specific that no one is searching for it. So let's hop into Pinterest and I'll show you how to quickly find your keywords. So to find your keyword phrase, you're gonna wanna click on the search bar right here and you're gonna type in whatever comes to mind about your content. Say for example, you wanna do a post on vision boards. So I would just type in vision board and you'll see automatically we've been populated with some other long tail keywords. So a very, very broad keyword phrase would be vision boards. That could mean anything, but a little bit more specific could be vision board examples. So whatever your content is on, you're gonna wanna narrow in on that long tail keyword phrase that is between three to five words, but you don't wanna be so specific that your content cannot be found. So this is our keyword. So once you have your keyword phrase, and if you're having trouble finding more specific keywords, I want you to check out this video where I review the best new keyword tool that's gonna help you with this area. Okay, so once you have that keyword phrase, it's time to start writing your pin titles. So I'm going to share with you six secrets to creating click worthy pin titles. So secret number one is you want to use those powerful emotional words in your titles. So whether they're adjectives, which are simply describing words or powerful action taking words. You want to make sure that you're using those emotionally triggering words that could be like proven, helpful, catchy, unusual, the worst, tough, powerful, or even stupid or silly or crazy or mind blowing or epic. So with this example, we have the ultimate guide to decluttering paper. So it's not just a guide, it's the ultimate guide. It's a describing word, which is an adjective. Then we have 50 stupid things you must stop buying right now, the, which is the trigger word, stupid, right? It's a adjective, it's describing the things. So you wanna find those words that are triggering. Also, we've got 19 Pinterest tips that will skyrocket your page views. That one's an action, which means it's a verb. So you don't wanna just say, 
that will, you know, raise your page views or give you more page views. It's going to skyrocket your page views. So you can see how it's more, there's more emotion to it, right? So if you need help with finding these emotional trigger words, I encourage you to check out CoSchedule. Not only do they have this amazing tool called a headline analyzer, but they've got this freebie that's going to give you all those emotional words that you want to start using like courage, crave, crazy, crisis, cruel, crush, okay, danger. You know, there are all those words there that can help you start adding emotions to your pin titles. Link down below, of course. My second secret for writing Pinterest pin titles is start with a number or add a number. So I'm talking about creating a list type post like five steps to or adding numbers for more effect like 100%, 5,000. You know, those numbers that also have that emotional trigger behind it. So here's a great example, 11 reasons nobody reads your blog. So we got 11, but also we have that nobody, which is one of those emotional words as well. So this one's doubling up. We've got up to 5,000 a month. That's huge. That's going to get a click because it's such a huge amount that it's triggering to you. Like you want to make 5,000 a month recording your voice. Another one here is how I grew my blog traffic by 500% in 30 days, 500% in 30 days. Numbers are big triggers for click worthy pin titles. Also how I turned one piece of content into 10 pins in 10 minutes. We've got 10 pins, 10 minutes. Those are numbers that are emotionally triggering and it gives you excitement and you want to click because you want to know how they did it. So my third secret for writing pin titles is to ask a question or lead with why or what. Using these terms of phrase is way more enticing than a simple how to post. So a great question could be, is it too late to start a blog? Am I too old to do whatever? What's the difference between A and B? This is actually a tip I got from this Backlinko blog post on how to create more click-worthy blog post titles. You can use this same types of tips for your pin titles. So here are some examples. Why no one's buying your products? Ooh, it kind of hits home. You want to click. You want to know why, right? Another one, bored at home? Try out these 17 things right now, right? Great post from Dr. For Love. Are you bored? Are your pins boring? Is no one clicking? You can see how I could use questions. Is it too soon to start buying baby stuff? This is a great use of a question. Why am I obsessed with the Pomodoro technique? Okay, so make use of questions. Instead of saying how, what about why or what? Statistically, people are more likely to click when you say why or what or ask a question instead of just saying how to. So secret number four is you want to use parentheses, brackets, dashes, plus signs wherever you can. So this is really great if you want to front load your keyword. So it could be keyword phrase and then whatever your title is, you could even do in brackets. Number three will blow your mind or check out number five or even at the end you could say free printable. Okay, so make use of semicolons, parentheses, brackets, and dashes, plus signs. That's going to help you increase the click on your pin, just like these examples. So here we have a question. Can a messy family be minimalist? And in her pin title, messy versus minimalist, we've got a dash and messy versus minimalist. Okay. Another great example here Pinterest SEO traffic secrets. So that's most likely the keyword phrase, how to skyrocket your growth. So instead of starting with how to, Hannah here started with the keyword phrase. So here's another one. In this pin, Marina has how to add PayPal to your Wix website, but she has her keyword Wix PayPal at the front of her title for her pin than adding PayPal to your Wix website. So the next time you're writing a Pinterest pin title, instead of just having a boring old sentence, think of ways that you can make use of a dash 
or a parenthesis or, you know, a semicolon or even brackets. So your fifth secret is to be negative. Don't just look on the bright side of things. You want to transform any of your headings into a negative. So the do's and don'ts or how not to or using words like danger, mistake, failure, avoid. All of those words have a negative connotation that makes somebody feel like they have to click because they have to know what they could possibly be doing wrong and how to fix it. So here are some great examples of that. What not to do when starting a blog. 10 rookie mistakes. Look at this, doubling up on some of my pin title secrets. So avoid what not to do, right? Here's another one, seven worst morning habits. You can use the word worst. It's kind of scary, it's a negative, right? You can also use mistakes and avoid. So five top money mistakes to avoid in your 20s. Ken and Mary are sharing this post. I know I wanna click, I wanna know what mistakes I'm making. Another one here, seven mistakes to avoid if you want a successful business. And then we have avoid these seven mistakes if you want to be successful in business. Okay, avoid mistakes, failure. These are words that are highly emotional and will get you the click. And my sixth secret for you is you want to add some mystery and some intrigue. So don't be clickbaity, but you can use things like saying, the truth about, or the real reason, the shocking story behind, the truth you have to know, or things like that that are mysterious. Think about any amazing like thriller you've seen on television or movie. They draw you in because it's a mystery and you have to know. You have to click. So self-made ladies did a really great job with this pin. The secret behind the secret and making use of, you know, those colons and dashes as well, right? The secret behind the secret, the real reason, the truth, what's the truth, right? Or we have the ugly side of blogging, bloggers don't share, <gasps> like it's scandalous. Like I wanna know, like what are they not telling me? So use mystery, add some intrigue to your pin titles and you're not being clickbaity, you're delivering on those secrets, those reveals. You're giving them the tea, right? So now that you know all my secrets for writing pin titles, it's time to start experimenting. So don't just write one pin title. You definitely want to split test. So that means when you're designing multiple fresh pins to the same piece of content, you're going to want to change up the pin title. You're also going to want to change up what exactly is on your pin. So the title that's on your pin image to see what's getting the click more than another phrase, right? You can also play around with related keywords. So remember all those long tail keyword phrases we saw when we were searching for our keyword? Substitute a different one, test it and see what people are clicking on more. This is a great example I just had to share with you. Is it too late to start a blog in 2021? This is one version of the pin, but we also have this version. So different designs, as you can see, also slightly different pin title. So you wanna experiment with your pin, not only your designs, but your titles, as well as your descriptions. So I am a fan of this. So you can see, for example, with my summer quotes posts, I've played around with different titles as well as different designs to see what people are more likely to click on. A-B testing your pins is key. So for example, I noticed that saying goodbye to summer doesn't do as well as these other pin titles. So we can see here, say goodbye to summer, 50 clicks. Shockingly similar to this other one here. So you've got to test and split test between your pins. So don't just upload multiple pins with the exact same title or the exact same image. You've got to play around and see what exactly is getting the click from your audience. So if you even want to get a leg up before you start, I encourage you to check out a tool like the Co-Schedule Headline Analyzer. Because what's a pin title if not a headline? So let's let's test that out. 65 quotes to say goodbye to summer. 
And here we can see that this only scores a 63. So let's make use of some of my headline writing tips. I'm gonna go end of summer quotes, 65 ways to say goodbye to warm weather. And look at that, 89. We can see that this is a far better title, making use of all of those tips that I've been sharing with you. So be sure to use those six secrets for writing your pin titles. It's all about finding the right keyword phrase and then crafting a headline around it. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I'm more than happy to be your Pinterest coach and stick around and check out this video. It's going to be helpful to you. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.